Stewart Show, and I am your boy, Doug Stewart. Thank you so much for joining me. Yes! Yes, yes. How you doing? Hey, man, thank you so much for joining me on this show. Thank you so much for talking sports and listening and emailing and doing all of those things. Hey, listen, man, big game coming up, the national championship game, the BCS national championship game, and we got two great teams pitted against each other. And we're talking about the Auburn Tigers and the Florida State Seminoles. Now, because we know people around here, we get to talk to big names and get their, their insight and their thoughts on said game. So right now, joining me on the Doug Stewart Show is former Auburn Tiger, former NFL baller, Takeo Spikes joins the Doug Stewart Show. Takeo, man, thank you for coming on, bro. And how you doing? I'm doing well, man. Enjoying a little time off in the holidays. First time me actually being able to be at home for Christmas since, ooh, 1997, bruh. Wow, and that, and that was my first question to you. And we are talking to, to Keel Spikes, former Auburn Tiger, former uh, Cincinnati Bengal, just all over the NFL. How does it feel, man, to actually not be playing football for, for such a long time, like you just said? It's definitely funny because it's, you know, a lot of times we do things and we realize that, yeah, that's a part of my life. But I've been doing it for so long, ever since I was seven years old, I feel like it's a part of me. Right. And, you know, like it, it, there's no separation. So I, it, it's different, but, you know, the good thing about it now, I'm, I'm, I'm on the other side now with you. I'm, I'm part of the media now. Right, so right. Doing yeah. the interviews, conducting interviews, and... And uh, it's good. A good way for me to stay a part of it, but away from it. Yeah, and, and you just talked about it. I, I saw you on the NFL Network a while back. So you're doing some stuff with them. So so broadcasting is the next stage of your life, huh, bro? Yeah, that, that's the next hustle, man. I think any time that you can give give the viewers some, some great insight, uh, you know, it's, just, it's always priceless because everybody sees it a different way. Right. And, you know, and all the guys have different credibility. Right, right. Talking to, to Keo Spikes right now on the Doug Stewart Show. And, and you know what? You've been part of the game for so long, and you talked about the fact that it's much different right now. I think people really respect when a guy that, that, that had the status that you did in the NFL comes and they talk, and, and, and talk about the games, right? Yeah, it, it is. And, and I like it because I would like to think that I bring something different to the table, Doug. You know, because playing 15 years into the league, five different teams, and, and every team is different. Right. Every locker room is different. And to see certain case scenarios play out the way that they did with quarterbacks, me being on uh, top 15 defenses, top five defenses, being the number one defense in the league. So it, it's I have a lot to tell, man. A lot to tell. All right, now I want to get your thoughts on the national championship game here at the end. But let me let me ask you a couple of questions. First of all, Tequil Spikes, 15 years in the NFL. What what's your fondest memory of the NFL? Like you said, you played for five different teams. Is there one thing that sticks out in your mind to 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 something that you'll probably always remember about your time in the NFL, bro? Yeah, I, I, to play as long as I have is is. It's several, but the one that stands out to me, and it kind of it kind of like was a carryover, was my last game playing for Cincinnati. We played in Buffalo, and when I walked out on the field in pregame, damn near the entire stadium was recruiting me because they knew I was becoming a free agent. Right. And I was like, you know what? It's nice to be wanted. <laughs> it's nice to feel wanted. Right. And I did. I, I didn't even have a clue. Three months later, I'll be a part of the Buffalo Bills. And, and the most, I will probably say that memorable moment for me was the first game in Buffalo against the Patriots. I came out, got defensive player of the week, uh, two interceptions, double-digit tackles, and, and, I mean, we... We 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 romped this we romped the Patriots that day. Now now obviously we we're talking about the national championship and everybody saw you come onto the scene when you got to Auburn. You were a baller at Auburn. Uh, what's your what's your fondest memory at Auburn? We know the rivalry between the Tigers and and the Crimson Tide and being in the SEC. Do you have a memory that sticks out in your mind about your time with the uh, with the Auburn Tigers? Yeah, I do. It was. <laughs> The Iron Bowls, I mean, that's that's classic. Right. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to give you another one. It was 
in 97, Georgia played, I want to say they played Florida down in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and throughout that time, I think Georgia has never beaten Florida down in Jacksonville. And uh, they came off a big win beating Florida, and I think they was a top five team. And everybody had these guys as far as going to play in the national. With Heinz Ward, uh, Robert L was being there, and uh, me and Robert grew up together. So you know, we came down. We had to go to uh, uh, Georgia Stadium that day in Athens on that Saturday mm -hmm. night game, prime time, ESPN. And for me, being from Georgia and playing the Georgia Bulldogs, and I knew everybody jumped on the bandwagon for them. I came out, man, and I was hitting anything that was good. <laughs> right, right. I, I put together like 16 tackles. Uh, I was all just, just you know, just going in their place, beating those guys after that high they came off the week before. That was a big moment for me. Now, now I know I've asked you this question over the years because we had you on the on the two live studios several times. I'm sure I asked you, but I got to ask you one more time. You were like the most highly recruited, one of the most highly recruited players coming out of high school when you when you did come out. How is it that you're from Georgia? How did the Georgia Bulldogs miss out on Takeo Spikes? Oh, man. You know what? I, I wanted stability when I came out. Mm -hmm. And I looked at Georgia's uh, coaching staff, and, and, you know, Ray Goff was there, and I think Donovan was getting ready to come in. But mm -hmm. from the defensive side, they didn't have any stability. I think over the past five years, they had five different defensive coordinators. Right. And, and you know, when I talked to guys, you could tell that at that time, I could tell that, I said, well, what position would I play? Because I always wanted to play outside. Mm -hmm. And they told me, they was like, well, you know, we can put you here and there. For me, I felt like, well, you didn't do your homework. Mm -hmm. I felt like you was looking at somebody else. At least give me a definitive answer. Right. And so uh, I just felt like it wasn't enough stability, even though all the guys who went to school there, I'm, I'm, I'm just as close as they, close with them than I am to my guys who I played with at Auburn. Wow, wow, that's that's impressive for a high school kid to to look into it with with that depth that you did at that time. Finishing up with Tequila Spikes right now on the Doug Stewart Show. All right, got to ask the question, man. National championship game. Your boys are back in this game. I think the third time in five, or the second time in five years, something like that, from uh, Cam Newton being there before. Playing against Florida State, Jameis Winston, the Heisman Trophy winner. Just a fantastic squad, de destroying everybody. But you guys got Nick Marshall. Trey Mason ran for over 300 uh, in the national championship game. He was uh, in New York for the Heisman Trophy presentation. What's it going to take? Your, your team's the underdog. What's it going to take for the Auburn Tigers to pull this thing out, Spikes? I just think that it's gonna, they're a resilient football team. And the belief that they carry from the Georgia game, going into the Alabama game, going into the SEC championship game against Mizzou, that's what it's going to take, those guys being able to play at a high level. You know, and it's a great matchup, you know, and one of the things that I look forward to is that you got two different spectrums when you see these two teams playing against each other. One is a mostly a running football team. The mm -hmm. other, can they can run, but mostly they make their money off a of pass. Right. Uh, so, you know, for, for me, in order for the Auburn Tigers to be able to win this game, they cannot turn the ball. They got to win the turnover battle. That's a must. Mm -hmm. And if they're able to do that and continue the high pace, pace that offense that they set, they, I, you know, I, I, it, it may be the last man has the ball again. Wow, wow. Now, listen, one, one last thing. You played in the league for over 15 years. We talked about that earlier. Uh, one of the best linebackers I think I've seen in the last 25 years. Uh, just hadn't played for the greatest teams. In all of your years of football, little league, high school, college, the pros, have you ever seen an ending with such implications as what happened in that Iron Bowl with that last second uh, short field goal kick return? Uh, have, you, have, you, have you ever seen anything like that from Chris Davis, what he did? Man, I, I I never seen nothing like that. <laughs> Even in the, you know, you've seen plays on Sports Center, right? But to see two like credible teams with so much implications on the end of right. the game, right? Right. I don't think I ever seen that before in my lifetime. Not in my lifetime living. I, I, I've said it, man. I, I've watched football, you know, for thirty-five plus years, where I can understand what I, I, I'm watching. 
I've never seen anything like that, man. The ramifications of what happened with that play was just incredible to me, man. It was, it was unbelievable, man. Like, and I'm a, and I'm proud. I'm in the stands, looking like, okay, if he catches, it, hopefully he, he has a chance. Right. And just to see it manifest like that, man, everybody in the stand. I'm throwing popcorn. <laughs> five, I'm hugging, hey, I'm hugging guys five rows below me. Right. Don't even know him. Right, right, right. Wow. Hey, Spikes, man, thank you so much for the time, bro. Good luck to you on the broadcasting. I know you're gonna do big things. I, I look at you, man. I look at you, kind of like. Uh, I don't want to call you a poor man's Ray Lewis, but, you know, because that's kind of like condescending. You, you to me, were, were right in that class with Ray Lewis. You just didn't have the, the players, the teammates around you to do big things like Ray Lewis did, bruh. Yeah, I, 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 you know what, it, it was, uh, it, it's, it's been a tough road. Right. And you can look at it and say, people can argue the fact that, you know, he had the players I didn't or, you know, and I, I give him much props, man. He's right. probably one of the best, the best linebacker to play the game as of to this day. And you know, and, and you know, and the thing that I'm most proud of, Doug, is just the fact that for me to be able to continue to do it, team after team, right, uh, and 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 not have the the winning record. A lot of times, I, I underestimated the fact when people would come up to me and say. How were you able to keep going after year after year after year? Right. With not even having a chance to play for it all. Right. But it was just my belief, and that that just shows you how the mind can override everything, man. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Good stuff, Spikes. Once again, thank you for the time, man, and good luck to you. We'll talk to you down the road, folks. All right, man. Appreciate it. That's Tequil Spikes right there on the Doug Stewart Show. Now, that's what I'm talking about. My man, Tequil Spikes, joins the Doug Stewart Show, man. I love that dude. Passion. One of the best linebackers we've probably seen over the last 25 years. Just didn't play with great teams. And I said that before. The guy was a baller on every level. High school, uh, college, and in the NFL. Listen, thank you for joining your boy Pastor the Word on the show. I need you to like the show. I need you to share the show. And I need you to subscribe to the show. Right down here is a little button that says subscribe. Tell all your friends, all right? You can email me, Doug, at thedougstewartshow.com. Check the show out on thedougstewartshow.com. And uh, you can also text your boy at 770-847-0536. That's what's up. It's the Doug Stewart Show.